Hello, my name is Tim Harrigan. Today, I will present the Appropriate Scale Mechanization Consortium online open course on farm power. The learning objectives for this module are to understand the fundamentals of the sources of farm power, manual power, draft animal power, mechanical power, and matching power units and farm implement power. Work is the application of force over a distance. Power is the application of force over distance per unit of time. For example, consider a horizontal force of 600 newtons needed to pull a cultivator across a field at a speed of 2 meters per second. How much power is used and how much work is done in 30 minutes? The answer is, the power generated is calculated as 600 newtons times 2 meter per second equals 1200 joules per second, which is equivalent to 1200 watts or 1.2 kilowatts. The work is 1200 watts times one half hour equals 600 watt hours. Tractor-drawn implements are powered through the traction of drive wheels and drawbar pull. Drawbar power is available at the tractor drawbar to pull an implement. Calculate drawbar power as a force multiplied by the travel speed divided by a constant 3.6. For example, consider a tractor pulling a 4 meter wide tandem disc at 10 kilometers per hour in loam soil. The disc draft or pulling force is 26 kilonewtons. What is the developed drawbar power? Drawbar power equals the product of 26 kilonewtons times 10 kilometers per hour divided by 3.6 or 72 kilowatts. In English units, 0.746 kilowatts equals 1 horsepower. So, by dividing 72 kilowatts by 0.746 kilowatts, we see that the equivalent drawbar power in English units is 96.5 horsepower. Power takeoff power is the rotary power delivered through the power takeoff at the tractor's rear. Tractor size in kilowatts or horsepower is usually designated as the maximum power available at the PTO. Because PTO power is rotational, we can calculate the PTO output power of a tractor with a rotational speed of 540 RPMs and an output torque of 1.5 kilonewton meters as the product of 2 pi times 1.5 kilonewton meters times 540 RPM divided by the constant 60. The PTO power is 42 kilowatts or 56 horsepower. Hydraulic systems are crucial components of modern tractors. Hydraulic systems control the action of mounted tillage implements and the steering system. They engage the PTO clutch and power front end loaders and other systems. We can calculate the hydraulic power of a tractor with a hydraulic flow rate of 1.25 liters per second in a gauge pressure of 15,200 kilopascals as the product of 15,200 kilopascals times 1.25 liters per second divided by 1,000. The hydraulic power is 19 kilowatts or 25.5 horsepower.
Electricity supplies power for light, heating, cooling, ventilation, and other uses. For example, we can calculate the power requirement of a milk bulk tank compressor rated at 240 volts and 60 amps as 60 amps times 240 volts equals 14.4 kilowatts or 19 horsepower. Worldwide, smallholder farmers strive to be financially sustainable and seek affordable technologies compatible with their economic and natural resource base. Diverse power sources are widespread across Africa. Modern machinery is often inaccessible or unaffordable. In the image on the right, the areas in green show where hand labor is dominant. The areas in yellow and red show where draft animals are used extensively. Wheeled tractors are common in the purple and blue areas, mostly across North Africa. Here is a regional look at the diversity of power sources for land preparation in Africa and beyond. Human power is most common in Sub-Saharan Africa and East Asia, and engine power is more common in Latin America and South Asia. Draft animal power ranges from 25% to 40% across all regions. Resources available to smallholder farmers vary widely, and farmers need technologies that are accessible, affordable, and appropriate. Purchased inputs are a risk for small and poor farmers, particularly where supply and financing are unavailable. Engine power often increases where government policies support its development. Where labor is abundant and mechanization is limited, human power is a key source of farm power. Human labor is deployed in various ways, walking, pushing, pulling, lifting, carrying, and throwing. Simple machines such as levers and inclined planes multiply physical strength and permit farmers to accomplish more work with less effort. However, the bulwark of land preparation with hand tools is difficult and exhausting. Lack of available labor limits farm profitability if good land for expansion is available, and excessive use of poorly designed hand tools can damage health. Managing human labor for high-demand tasks such as planting, weed control, and harvesting is challenging for smallholder farmers without access to mechanized power. Women and children often have key roles in these farm activities in addition to other household tasks such as child care, preparing meals, fetching water, and other normal daily activities. Affordable mechanization can ease the burden on farm families. Draft is the force required to move a farm implement in the direction of travel. Farm managers and others use draft or power data to match tractors with implements and to estimate fuel requirements. Draft information is often used in machinery management to calculate the power requirements of tillage and seeding operations. This equation was developed and is used by the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers to estimate the tillage and seeding equipment draft. The draft force required to pull many seeding implements and minor tillage tools operated at shallow depths is primarily a function of the width of the implement 
and the speed at which it is pulled. For tillage tools operated at deeper depths, the draft also depends upon the depth and geometry of the tool. This simple function predicts tillage draft under general conditions where the draft is a function of soil texture, implement width, depth, and speed of operation. Typical draft requirement parameters for some implements are summarized in this table. Each parameter is a function of the tillage tool design. The constant parameter A is a function of soil strength, while the coefficient of speed parameters B or C is related to soil bulk density. Soil is categorized as fine, medium, or coarse. Fine textured soil is high in clay content. Medium textured is loamy and coarse textured is sandy. Typical values of all parameters are listed along with an expected range or variation due to differences in machine design, machine adjustment, machine age, and site specific conditions, including soil moisture and residue cover. This range gives the expected average or typical draft variation as machine and soil conditions not included in the equation vary. Here are additional draft parameters for row crop planters, grain drills, row crop cultivators, and other tools. Draft parameters for several additional tools and farm implements are in ASABE standard D497.7. Now, let's use the ASABE tillage draft equation to estimate the draft requirement for a 25 centimeter moldboard plow traveling at 2 kilometers per hour at a depth of 15 centimeters in coarse, sandy soil. Referring to the previous tables, parameter A is 652, B is 0, and C is 5.1. And the soil parameter for sandy soils is 0.45. The estimated plow draft working through the equation with these parameters is 1,120 newtons or 114 kilograms force. Let's work through another example. Estimate the draft of a 2 meter wide spike tooth harrow in loamy soil traveling at 3 kilometers per hour. A spike tooth harrow is a secondary tillage tool to level the soil and uproot weeds for planting. A spike tooth harrow is considered a minor tillage tool, so all soil parameters are equal to 1. In referring to the table, the A parameter is 600. The estimated harrow draft working through the equation with these parameters is 1200 newtons or 121 kilogram force. Draft animals provide tractive power to till the soil, transport firewood and water, and move crops from field to market. At the end of their lives, they provide meat, hides, and other byproducts for household use and income on about 250 million hectares of land in developing countries worldwide. Draft animals are a major power source on small farms in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The French Agricultural Research Center for International Development estimated about 170 million African draft animals. 
about 86% were cattle, in addition to donkeys, horses, mules, and camels. There are many benefits of animal traction. In many areas, roads resemble nothing more than wide footpaths. Access to wheeled vehicles is challenging and at times impossible. Draft animals can navigate narrow trails and rugged terrain even in adverse weather. Wheeled tractors can damage the soil in poor field conditions. Draft animals are less damaging to soil than wheeled tractors. Relying solely on mechanized power increases the risk for smallholder farmers. Cattle reproduce and can be easily replaced with little capital outlay if disabled. Oxen increase in value as they grow and mature, so an ox can be sold for more than paid for. The sale of mature cattle is an essential source of farm income that mitigates risk. In Burkina Faso, the dry season extends from November until May. Feed supplies are usually exhausted by the end of the dry season, and working animals are in poor condition for physically demanding field work. So draft animals can only work efficiently for a few hours each day. Sleeping sickness, trypanosomiasis, can render draft animals useless in areas infested by the tsetse fly. Using mixed or diverse power sources on the same farm is quite common. In Burkina Faso, planting and weeding are done by hand, even if tractors till the soil. Donkeys are mainly for material transport, but small utility vehicles are common near urban areas. At harvest, custom threshers shell maize in return for a percentage of the crop but women mill and process grain by hand for family consumption to satisfy texture and taste preferences. Farmers need farm power that is accessible, affordable, and appropriate. Animal power is relevant where farm income is low and the expense of modern machinery is a substantial barrier for subsistence farmers where farm labor is readily available. Land holdings are small and farmland for expansion is scarce. There's 9 million head of cattle in Burkina Faso. They are plentiful, readily available, and they reproduce. So an ox can be replaced with little capital outlay. Sustainability is the fit between technology and the context in which it is used. In Burkina Faso, animal traction makes full use of locally available resources and enhances their efficiency and the resilience of the farming system. This table provides examples of cattle and donkeys performing primary tillage in Zimbabwe, Mali, and Niger. Primary tillage operations such as plowing and ridging occur at the beginning of the planting season when draft animals may be in poor physical condition because of the lack of quality feed during the dry season. The animals are typically small and work in teams of two to four. The average working draft force was about 12 to 15 percent of their live weight over a three to four hour workday. A draft animal's body weight 
is one way to estimate its draft capabilities, although animal health and physical conditioning are crucial. The weight of cattle can be estimated using the heart girth and the body length from the point of the shoulder to the base of the tail with the equation shown here. In Burkina Faso, plowing is a physically demanding task for draft animals. It comes at the end of the dry season after forage has been in short supply and the animals are in poor condition. The local cattle are smaller than northern breeds, usually less than 450 kilograms. They prefer a plow with a small cutting width, usually about 20 centimeters, run at 12 to 15 centimeters deep. The soil is coarse sandy loam, and in this case, the average draft was 93 kilograms force. Weed control is a key tillage objective, so they can reduce plowing depth to 8 to 10 centimeters, thereby reducing the volume of soil disturbed and the animal burden. The animals could do the same amount of work with less effort or work longer with the same effort when working at a shallow depth. We worked with the local farmers and blacksmiths to build an inline ripper for zone tillage. It disturbed a zone of soil 15 to 20 centimeters wide, leaving the inter-row area undisturbed. Zone tillage improves water infiltration and soil health by reducing tillage intensity and conserving protective crop residues. Farmers then plant directly into the rip line. The average draft was 43 kilograms force, only one half of the draft of the mold bore plow. The draft of a riding plow is typically 45 to 70 kilogram force greater than a similar size walking plow due to the rolling resistance of the riding plow. Soil moisture also has a big impact on the plow draft. We measured a 60% increase in plow draft in the same field in dry soil in the fall compared with moist soil in the spring. In Burkina Faso, five shank row cultivators are locally available and widely used for weed control. Our cooperating farmer identified two major problems with the local cultivator. One, it quickly plugged with crop residue, and two, the draft was too high. He removed two of the five shanks to reduce residue plugging, but this reduced full width root cutting and weed control. He then ran the three shank cultivator deeper to increase the volume of soil thrown to bury uncut weeds. But increasing the depth of cultivation increased the average draft to 93 kilogram force equivalent to his 20 centimeter moldboard plow. A spring tooth harrow is a good tool to break up crusted soil, uproot small weeds, and level and freshen a seedbed. We measured and mapped the pulling force of a 2.3 meter wide, 23 tine harrow in sandy loam soil. We, we used a global positioning system, a GPS, to record the variations in location and pulling force across the field with a pull meter in the towing chain. An average draft is actually a distribution of oscillating pulling forces. This graph displays the pulling force in 100 pounds 
or 45 kilogram force increments on the horizontal axis and the frequency of those pulling forces on the vertical axis. For instance, the vertical yellow bars represent the implement set for shallow tillage at about five centimeters depth. At that depth, 45% of the pulls were within 136 and 273 kilogram force and 40% were within 227 to 364 kilogram force. The green bars show draft forces at the seven and one half centimeter and the red bars at the 10 centimeter depth. The average draft at the five centimeter depth was 189 kilogram force, increasing to 284 kilogram force at seven and one half centimeters and to 446 kilogram force at the 10 centimeter depth. This figure shows the distribution of those pulling forces on the ground by area. The colors in the legend on the right show pulling forces in 45 kilogram or 100 pound force increments. For instance, the pulling forces in the yellow areas ranged from 227 to 273 kilogram force. The harrow was set at five centimeter depth on the west or the left side of the field and seven and one half centimeters on the east side. The draft on each side of the field was quite variable averaging 189 kilogram force at the five centimeter depth and 284 kilogram force at the seven and one half centimeter depth. A 50% increase in draft. Increasing the depth increased the draft substantially without a noticeable improvement in the quality of the seedbed. Clearly, Increasing tillage depth increased the animal's workload. So you can ease the burden on your animals and increase productivity by tilling the soil only as deeply and aggressively as needed to accomplish the tillage objectives. Tractorization is the adoption of wheeled tractors as a source of tractive or draft power. Tractors must have clear benefits to compete with low-cost hand labor or animal power on small farms. As sources of tractive power, wheeled tractors and draft animals are largely interchangeable because farmers can easily adapt implements like planters and weeders to either power source. There are few implements for use with tractors in many sub-Saharan countries. Only the disc plow is typical. In Burkina Faso, farms are small and farmland for expansion is scarce. So few farmers can use wheeled tractors profitably. For farmers with access to land and capital, tractorization can raise profits by enabling a larger crop volume on larger acreage. However, substituting tractor power for animal power on the same land base rarely yields greater than hand labor or animal power. Unless a tractor brings new land into cultivation that hand labor or animal power cannot, Using a tractor rarely results in a larger production volume on fixed land area. Simply substituting tractor power for animal power rarely increases yield per acre. From the 1960s to 2015 in India, the contribution from human and animal power decreased from 85% to 
and the contribution from mechanical and electrical power increased from 15% to 90%. Government policies had a key role in boosting grain production and facilitating financial assistance to agriculture by providing education and improving farmers' access to quality farm inputs, including hybrid crops, small-scale tools such as planters, seed drills and weeders, threshers, storage and processing facilities, and assistance for custom hiring services. This graph illustrates the time scale of some of those changes. The graph isn't perfectly clear because the vertical axis has relative values for cropping intensity, food grain production, and power availability. In that time, power availability is kilowatts per hectare, primarily as small tractors, two-wheel tillers, and electrical power sources increased more than fourfold from 0.48 kilowatts per hectare in 1975 to 2.13 kilowatts per hectare in 2015. Food grain production has doubled and cropping intensity the ability to timely complete multiple farm operations has increased by 20 percentage units since 1975. Tractorization and appropriate scale mechanization have contributed significantly to increasing food production and lessening the drudgery of farm work in India. Two-wheel drive tractors have a forward-mounted engine, counterbalanced by the equipment behind the drive wheels. Two-wheel tractors are normally powered by 6 to 12 kilowatt gasoline or diesel engines and are fitted with either rubber tires or steel cage wheels. Rubber tires are commonly used for dry land plowing and transportation. Cage wheels are necessary for wetland rice production. Two-wheel tractors can have advantages over animal power in developing countries. They can do more work quickly because of their greater power and speed and carry heavier loads when transporting crops or other materials. They can be equipped with various attachments such as plows, weeders, and harvesters. Two-wheel tractors can have drawbacks in some situations compared to animal power. High upfront equipment costs are a barrier to adoption for small-scale farmers. Fuel costs can be high and variable, and access may be limited. They require frequent maintenance and repair, and access to spare parts, repair services, or skilled technicians may be limited. A tractor chassis can be a two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, mechanical front-wheel drive, or track-driven. Two-wheel drive tractors are commonly used in dry or upland farming and transportation. The most common sizes are 22 to 33 PTO kilowatts. Four-wheel tractors may have several advantages over two-wheel tractors. They generally have greater power, are better suited to larger equipment and fields, and are more stable when carrying heavy loads or on une uneven ground. Four-wheel tractors are more comfortable for the operator and are more adaptable to a wider range of attachments and implements than two-wheel tractors. They are usually more durable than two-wheel tractors, with less frequent need for replacement or repairs. In agriculture, tracked vehicles distribute the weight over a larger surface area than wheels, reducing soil compaction with better traction in wet or muddy conditions. Motion resistance is a power loss. It is energy the tractor uses to keep the wheels 
rolling over a surface. Motion resistance increases considerably when heavy vehicles or implements are used in soft or loose soils. Tire or wheel slip occurs when the tires turn faster than the tractor's ground speed. A significant amount of tractor power is lost in transferring power from the tires to the soil. Some slip improves tractive efficiency, which is the ratio of drawbar power to axle power. Wheel slip protects against damage to the powertrain from shock overloads and reduces wear on the powertrain. Too little slip increases motion resistance and wastes power and fuel. The figure shows maximum tractive efficiencies occur between 4 and 16 percent slip depending on soil type and conditions. If excessive slip occurs, you may need to add weights such as iron or fluid in the tires, adjust tire pressure, or add dual tires to increase the ground contact area. Let's now determine the power requirement for a tractor harvesting and transporting maize silage. In this example, we will calculate the drawbar power for towing the forage harvester and forage wagon and the PTO power required to chop and throw the silage. This is a case where the PTO power requirement is considerably greater than the drawbar power requirement. So as an example, determine what size mechanical front wheel drive tractor is needed for a three row forage harvester pulling a front unloading forage wagon traveling at five kilometers per hour, chopping maize silage yielding 36 tons per hectare. The tractive condition is firm ground. The crop maize row width is 0 0.76 meters. The forage harvester mass is 2.5 tons. The loaded forage wagon mass is 4 tons. The PTO power requirement for chopping silage is 2 kilowatts per ton. The motion resistance is 15% of the implement mass. The tractive efficiency of the mechanical front wheel drive tractor is 0.76 on firm ground, and the mechanical efficiency of the power train is 0 0.96. The first step is calculating the silage feed rate for the forage chopper. The feed rate is calculated as the travel speed, 5 kilometers per hour, multiplied by the chopper width and the crop yield, 36 tons per hectare. Dividing the product by 10 for unit conversion, the silage feed rate is 41 tons per hour. Step 2 is to calculate the PTO power required for chopping. The required PTO power is the feed rate, 41 tons per hour, multiplied by 2 kilowatts per ton, equals 82 kilowatts. Step 3 is to determine the drawbar power required to overcome the motion resistance of the chopper and wagon. The weight of the chopper is 2.5 tons. 24.5 kilonewtons. The motion resistance is 15% of the chopper mass, 3.68 kilonewtons. Following the same process, the motion resistance added by the chopper wagon is 5.88 kilonewtons. The total motion resistance from the chopper and wagon 
is 9.56 kilonewtons. The drawbar power required to overcome the motion resistance is the product of the motion resistance 9.56 kilonewtons times 5 kilometers per hour divided by the constant 3.6 equals 13.3 kilowatts. The total power requirement is the sum of the individual implement power components converted to an equivalent PTO power. In this example, rather than calculating the electrical and hydraulic power components separately, we will allow an additional 20% of the calculated power requirement for reserve power. This additional power is required to accelerate and overcome topography, soil, and changes in crop conditions. Additional power is also needed for operator-related equipment such as hydraulic control systems, power steering, air conditioning, lights, fans, and so on. Combining the drawbar and PTO power requirement yields 100 kilowatts. The tractor size will include an additional 20% for reserve power and is calculated as 1.2 times 100 kilowatts equaling 120 PTO kilowatts or 160 PTO horsepower. In the conditions described, a 120 PTO kilowatt mechanical front wheel drive tractor is a good match for the three-row forage chopper and forage wagon. Drawbar, power takeoff, hydraulic, and electric power are the major sources of mechanized farm power. Farmers need farm power that is accessible, affordable, and appropriate. Animal power is relevant when farm income is low and the expense of modern machinery is a substantial barrier for subsistence farmers. There are many benefits of animal traction for smallholder farmers. Relying solely on me mechanized power increases the risk for many smallholder farmers. ASABE Standard D497.7 provides a simple function to predict tillage and planting draft where the draft is a function of soil texture, implement width, depth, and speed of operation. Tractorization is the adoption of wheeled tractors as a source of tractive or draft power. Tractors must have clear benefits to compete with low-cost hand labor or animal power on small farms. For farmers with access to land and capital, tractorization can raise profits by enabling a larger crop volume on larger acreage. Two-wheel tractors can have advantages over animal power in developing countries because of their greater power and speed, ability to carry heavier loads when transporting materials, and being equipped with attachments such as plows, weeders, and harvesters. Two-wheel tractors may have drawbacks compared to animal power. High upfront equipment costs are a barrier to adoption. Fuel costs can be high and variable, they require frequent maintenance, and access to repair services may be limited. Four-wheel tractors have advantages over two-wheel tractors. They have more power, are better suited to larger equipment and fields, and are more stable when carrying heavy loads or when on uneven ground. 
Motion resistance is a power loss. Motion resistance increases considerably when heavy vehicles or implements are used in soft or loose soils. Wheel slip occurs when the tires turn faster than the tractor's ground speed. Some slip improves tractive efficiencies. Depending on the soil type and conditions, maximum tractive efficiency occurs between 4 and 16 percent wheel slip. Matching a tractor with implements requires knowledge of the drawbar, PTO, hydraulic, and electric power requirements. Add 20 percent to the required power as reserve power for acceleration, overcoming topography, soil and crop condition changes, and power for the hydraulic and electric systems.